We're glad to have you back to the studio and um, of course every Tuesday we talk nothing but politics and um, today we will be discussing the team Tinumbu uh, Bola Bola Wale public affairs commentator has joined us in the studio good morning and a pleasure having you on our program good morning my brother I'm happy to be here thank you so much sir yeah. and we also expect um, they will be bordering to join us virtually but let me let me let me let me start with you yeah. Um, the president did address the nation July 31st, yeah. and um, he said that um, the Nigeria's economy was um, almost in a comatose, yes. yeah, to use his words, uh, and that the Nigerians need to make some sacrifices. Yes. Unfortunately, Tim Tinumbu has had about um, 45 out of 48 nominees for ministerial positions cleared at the Senate. Is this insensitive of a government asking Nigerians to make sacrifices, yet it has its bloated uh, ministers uh, setting a record for the highest number of ministerial, ministerial nominees since this fourth republic, 1999 to date? Mm. It's loaded. Number one, you have to blame the constitution for that, our constitution. Our mm -hmm. constitution says you must pick a minister from each of the states of the federation. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, another criteria. We have six geopolitical zones, which was created by uh, the late uh, President Sani Abasha. Mm -hmm. Then you pick also from one or each of the six geopolitical zones. So 36 plus six, that's 42. Then Abuja is also treated, FCT is also treated as a state. You pick one from there, that is 43. Mm -hmm. So whether you like it or not, you, uh, the position says you can have 43. Mm -hmm. So, and then you ask yourself, even in the United States, that's bigger than Nigeria, how many secretaries, how many ministers do they have? In India, that's bigger, how many times than Nigeria, how many ministers do they have? Our constitution is first and foremost to be blamed. Then number two, our politics is also to be blamed because uh, everybody, that is anybody in politics wants to nominate somebody. Mm -hmm. And our politics is politics of uh, rub my back, I rub your back. Yeah. If I contributed to your success at the polls, I also want to be compensated. I come with a list and then you you must satisfy me or else I become disgruntled right from day one. Mm. So the party leaders are there. They also want their, their, their people. The Obas, the Emirs, the Obis, they also want somebody there. You won't believe it. The traditional, the, the, the church leaders too, the mosque leaders, the religious leaders also want to have somebody. And then, apart from that, the youths, they are crying they want to have somebody. Women, they are crying they must, they must be women empowerment. By the time you put all these various groups together, you discover that even if you have the intention of running a lean administration, mm -hmm. very lean, you, the system will not allow you. Having said that, why did Tinubu come to this level of having a bloated, uh, a bloated uh, National Executive Council, a, 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 a bloated team, when he himself had said that the economy is in trouble and you expect that in an economy that is in trouble like we have in Nigeria, you do three things. Number one, you increase your sources of income yeah. mm -hmm. because we are not generating enough. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what we are generating, the leakages, the holes, crude oil theft, mm -hmm. yeah. The corruption mm -hmm. and, and the, the subsidy that has been cancelled now, all these leakages ensure that we do not have enough resources, enough revenue coming in. The crisis in the Niger Delta area also made sure that we cannot even meet our quota. The theft there made sure that we cannot meet our quota. 
So if our quota was 2.5 uh, million barrels per day, we were doing one point something. So we were even losing uh, money there. We were also losing money to the theft. We are also losing money even when the money has come into corruption. Mm -hmm. So what a government that is really understands that it's running a, a, an economy that is comatose should do is you increase your sources of income. What are the sources? In Nigeria, you go, you, you, you must go back to agriculture mm -hmm. and you must do mining and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. All the manufacturing companies, everything that have relocated, you must woo them back. Mm -hmm. All the factories that have collapsed, we had many factories in those days. In the 70s, in the 80s, yeah. where Michelin was there, Dolop was there, all the Lebanese were there, safe, safe. Yeah. Where are they? They yeah. have all relocated. And recently, you, GSK has, has yes. gone. Mm -hmm. So you must bring them back. And then you must go to where we started after independence, agriculture. Where are the cocoa farmers? Where are the uh, granite pyramids? Palm oil, we used to export palm oil. Mm. Malaysia came here to get our seedlings. Today we are importing palm oil from Malaysia. So where are the coffee pyramids we used to have? All those things we used to export that gave us the money that made the, the Western region, for example, to be able to build Cocoa House, to be able to find the first television in Africa, yes. Liberty Stadium and others. All, all these uh, GREs you find all over the place. Ikeja, uh, Apapa, and, others, and, uh, and all these business development areas, centers you have. All those farm settlements of those days, where are they? So we can, yeah. can rightly conclude they? that um, it's a bit insensitive of the government. Huh? Yeah. Yes, in, in, in a sense, until they come out to tell us why, yes, sir. we can say, ah, I, I won't want to use the word the sensitive. I want to say that he is not working the talk. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. A, yes. a, a second before you ask your question. Yes. You probably have to ask Dewey Abodori, who has joined us virtually. Dewey, good morning. It's a pleasure to have you on our program. Yes, thank you, Dickin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'll hand you over to my colleague, Christoph, who uh, is taking uh, the next shot. Yeah, um, well, I, before you came in, I think I've had uh, uh, Dewey's opinion on that. I mm. just wanted to find out the, um, your opinion. Okay. Um, the administration, yes, we're saying is, it has a bloated cabinet. Mm. But beyond it being bloated, what will you say about the quality of people in that team? Because uh, I'm, I'm very, very positive that if we have very good people, irrespective of whether it's bloated or not, they might be able to come together to at least do something meaningful for the economy, for the people, and for some of the pervading issues. So what is your opinion about the quality of people we have in that uh, bloated cabinet? Yeah, you still use the word bloated. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be bloated. Uh, and the quality of people is difficult to decide a priori until they begin to perform. In Nigeria, you have seen people that you expected a lot from, and then in the end, they disappointed mm -hmm. terribly. So you have seen people parade qualifications, parade certificates, and they have disappointed. You have seen people who had been very vocal in condemning this, condemning that, and then when you put them there, they become worse than the situation that they had uh, condemned. So I will want to wait and see these people perform. I will not want to just say, oh, we have this, we have that. People are already complaining that you have a, you are recycling old hands. We have a, many ex-governors who are there. Uh, but I think that if somebody had been a governor and he governed the way, he should be able to perform as a minister. If somebody had been a governor, I, to be a governor, you must have been in charge of all the total gamut of running the state. You run, you run the education, you run, you run the works, you run the health, you run agriculture, you run everything. Yeah. The totality of the whole. In fact, it's like you are a mini president in your own area. You have run everything. So you should be able to handle a ministry. So rather than being a former governor, a government, former governor being a disadvantage, it should be an, an advantage in the real sense of the word if actually mm. they are there to work yes. and they are competent in whatever they, whatever they are doing. So the fact that you have been a former governor should not be a disadvantage, it should be an asset. 
So I want to wait and see all these people. This one was for, I had a Harvard, Harvard train. This one was a guru in America. That you perform very well in America does not mean you perform well in Nigeria because the systems are different. True, true. The, the enabling environment you have in, the, in America, in Europe, is, you don't have it there. The various uh, sentiments that we put into governance there is not there. The need is still yeah. there. So what will, I, what will make it possible for you to perform in America? You don't have them here. There is, it's not here. So the fact that somebody was good in America does not mean it will be good here. Mm. So let's wait. I would say let's wait and see them perform. And then well, their performance will also depend on the body language and the leadership provided by the president. I have been close to those of them in government. The first thing they do when they go to get to government when a new person comes is they study the template of that person. Mm. Once they understand the template of that person, and they know that, oh, this one is, you know, is, 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 is not going anywhere, this one is not, they key into it. Mm -hmm. So if the template of the president is right, we will expect good performance from the ministers. If he leads from the front, we will expect good performance from the ministers. But if they see him, that is like uh, former President Buhari. Immediately, he first said, oh, Bu Buhari's body language. Everything was working well. But the moment they saw that Buhari was not the Buhari of uh, Idiagbo, Idiagbo era, yeah. everybody, every, everything fell, 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 fell out. And we had this problem that we have. You know, we, we, thank you for just making this, um, making this um, very, very interesting statement. And I wanted to ask Dewey, so with this thing that happened right now, we are seeing some things, basically, that even the least that we have, we don't have offices, presumed offices attached to them. And that's where we talk about competence. I know that's where Nigerians are really, really concerned. You said you're going to hit the ground running. That is body language, one way or the other. And now we still don't have people. And we don't know what these people are going to be attached to. They're not even drilled in the line of those things. No portfolio. No portfolio at all. What do we do with these things? And I'm sure I expected that even the Senate president was supposed to have really asked and also given or provided Nigerians with these things, but it wasn't done at all. What can we look forward to going forward in this whole matter now? Yes. Um, th thank you very much, uh, very much uh, for, for, for that. I'm um, to us observed again. To, uh, I'm excited to be here. And the gentleman in the studio, thank you for the analysis about we cannot see. Um, what would happen uh, or did they perform? And I agree with everything you said, except for the fact that you see there are three considerations. Number one, every action and inaction of this administration is denominated in the sufferings of the people or the prosperity and enjoyment of the populace. Um, we have crisis everywhere. While all of that crisis is not the creation of the current administration, performance cannot be left to happenstance. And I always say it, I empathize with the president, and thank you for those analyses, our constitution, the liabilities of politicking, a lot of things. And previous administrations is the third factor that has brought us to where we are right now in situ. But despite that, number one, let us create, create a culture that both language and culture that destroys corruption in behavioral mm. economics. Mm -hmm. There are factors that swallows up the best of strategy. Culture will always eat up your structure and strategy yeah. thinking. Yes. Make corruption very unlucrative. Number two, let's decrease the cost of governance and make it really, really governance merit based. Yes. Number three, let's have key result areas and indicator. Make it transparent. Put auditing processes in place. Give it monthly or quarterly review. Make it transparent. This system is too large from a systemic thinking perspective. It's not easy, it's a behemoth. Decontalize, defragmentalize. Let the regions go into productive thinking with the governors of the regions and the ministers work with the commissioners across the state to superintend for leadership. Let security be held down by the neck. Let there be internal, internal security and safety. The other thing is that make the process of governance and infrastructure development, let it be up on a website. 
let people be able to go take picture of how many kilometers down. Not the one that Lagos Ibadan Express started in 1979. Until today, we are still in the closing stages. The other states across West Africa that have the same stretch of road are already done. What are we talking about? A project is not a phantom. So whoever the minister will be, let's put structure and system in place. Whoever the individual will be that comes into the office, we are where we are. I don't agree with that model. We can't have people I mean, who are dramatists and theatrists as ministers of the Federal Republic. My opinion, they are good for some portfolio. And some of them are really talented. Even Mr. Wike, who uh, is not, I don't know what his appellation is, who I think is a theatrist, despite that, he has his talent. In talent management, that's how you can use him. But my bigger point is, let's put performance structure and the communication. There's the office of the chief, chief, the man who, who takes care of ministers, um, the chief of chief staff. Of chief of staff. Chief of staff. Let, let there be that man who will mark them. If you don't perform, can Nigerians sack the person? Can there be a vote? How many kilometers of road have you done? How many? This thing, look, our engineering, these things are marked. Make it transparent. There is no cultism in this. Put it on fire and then it will boil. Hmm. Whoever the Minister of Health is, how much infant mortality are we going to see? Uh, reduced in the next 12 months, 18 months. That is, we know things are bad and where they are. Mm. But let us begin to take proactive, practical, pragmatic steps. We cannot keep saying this is how we are. These are our problems. You know, you need that, yeah. And then we, we all refuse and we keep, there's something called learned helplessness. When you continue because you are breathing, it's not bad, and then you are adapting, and you are adapting until I did provide proverbia from the heat of the fire just explodes and kills people. Hmm. The temperature in town now is performance. Yes. And Nigerians are ready to really, and I empathize with the president, to really be calm. If you say two years, I will do this. They don't do what, don't promise what you cannot do. If you can only scrape the road in 18 months, say so. How many kilometers will be done? Who are the contractors? What was the process of choosing them? Make these things transparent. Once it's transparent and it can be tracked, the meaning is simple. Okay. But we live in a country where we put cold steam around beans. See, to cook beans, there's a process that now starts like this, and, and then we begin to put other reasons. We will not go anywhere. We said this all the way since independence to date. Is this how we're going to tell the future? And I say this again about Mr. President. When you are an elderly person at the terminal gate of life, clarity dawns on all. After now, I don't seem to live more than 50 years, 20, I don't know when God will call him home. But this is the time for him to put his name in the history books for legacy. It is okay. not blind criticism that people are doing. It is that we cannot continue to be where we are. That's my point. There we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to take a cue from Dewey when he talked about marking. Yeah. Um, the Senate has uh, requested that um, the government uh, should... Um, uh, appoint um, an auditor general. Yes. Um, particularly also, if we also understand the fact that the president also got a gentleman to probe or to investigate, that's a better word, CBN. 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 Yes. yes. Yeah, you see, uh, from my understanding, what I have been able to, 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 to see with the way Bola Ahmed you know, is going to run his government, the ministers, if not all of them, most of them are just going to be there as figurehead. The people that are actually going to run this government, that the president is going to work with his team, he has already chosen. Those are the special advisors. Mm. You will see them, those are the, 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 that's the area where he chose people with technical abilities. That's the area where he chose people who will formulate the policies. And I, 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 I'm in possession of his economic blueprint that those people already formulated. So whether you have a minister in this, a minister in that, the man already has his team, his team of technocrats that he, he trusts in, that he believes in, that are already formulating the policies. These ministers are going to come. They are not the ones that will formulate the policy that Bola Metinubo will run. So the why people, have a bloated squad when you already... To satisfy all the political interests interest that we have, talk, we have talked about. Well, Yaradu had about 39. 
Yaradua did not have the same problem that this man had. Yaradua, 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 he didn't have to face what Bolatinubu is facing. Bolatinubu is still in court. Bolatinubu is not even sure whether, the, whether he will win at the tribunal, whether they will, whether they will ask her that there should be a rerun. So Bolatinubu did not have the type of uh, opposition, uh, uh, Yaradua did not have the type of opposition of youths, of answers and things like that, of Obi, of Atiku and things like that. In the time of uh, Yaradua, uh, Atiku easily gave in. But now we have a situation where he's, he has gone to court in the U.S. to ask for this, to ask for that. They are, they are in their tribunal in Nigeria. So this man has more problems than any other elected president in the history of this country since 1999. That's about recording. But one thing also worth knowing that he also has said that mm -hmm. for him, that statement when he said Emilio Kong, yes. it meant that he knew that it was going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He knew. So, mm -hmm. And he also said that it was going to hit the ground running. That's, yes. It is based on the statements yes. that he's made yes. and he's confirmed to Nigerians. Yes. Nigerians are looking at because we had a former president where President Bondubari, she wasn't talking to us. Mm, yes. There were many times when I just asked, talk to the nation. Yeah. He didn't speak to us. Yes. All he did was just body language and yes. just go. But now, this man is we are coming on board. We are looking forward to leaders where, like what Shagun Riley said before, before he came on board, mm. let's see you walk the talk. You're spoken, you're saying, I will, I will. Yeah. But you have not done it. So we need to have these people mad. Because I want to say this, because remember that mm. in Japan presently, yes. what they do if you are interned in an office, uh, before you close of your, of your before you close of your term, they do a poll, and mm. everybody in the whole country will do the poll. If you are, if you, if they are, they are not satisfied with what you have done, yeah. it comes out very clear, and everybody sees it. Mm. You will not run anymore. Mm. Yeah. That's what Adele said. Mm. We need yes. to get. Well, just like I would like, point, I really yes. want Adele to respond mm. to the myriads of challenges he's facing that is alien to previous governments. Okay. I would just like to have his opinion on that. Yes, it's true. It's true. To, 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 you see, and I will encourage everyone who is a Nigerian to please become a student of Nigerian history, Nigerian political history. Every president has the unique thing that they are facing. And there's a unique 90 days. Those are the hidden things about Nigeria's leadership. The truth is that our current president, and I empathize with him, is not facing a very easy battle. In between his age and his medical condition, because if I was his son or relative, I would still be concerned for him. But again, we choose old men in Africa. And again, the poverty systems in our country and our nation will not allow us to choose younger people. Before you can emerge as a president, you need 40 to 50 years of heavy barreled kind of money. There's a system in place to ensure that no young person that has the heart blood pressure to, to fire. You see, there is a, a, a the Bible. I'm so, so, sorry I'm going to the Bible. A man must bear the body when he's young. You, 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 you'll be a master footballer. But the reflex is when they pass ball at you at 82, the ball has passed. You think you have let the ball, but the ball has passed you. We are dealing with an elderly man, so, so we also, and we chose a previous much more elderly person. But age is not a factor in productivity. So, so I agree, the man is facing some heavy pressures. Managing Nigeria is not easy. We are ethno diverse and large. Our thinkings are more than a plan. And thank you for that about, about the West. Our consumer profile in Nigeria is not A, B, C, D, E. It's actually A to Z. Mm. There are people, you are talking financial inclusion, and there are people who they are teaching in Fufude and in Ibiobio. Ibi, Ibi, Ibi. They are not going to teach them in Yoruba, English, and Igbo, and the fourth one. They are teaching them, we have streets, ethno diversity. We have streets in Ondo State. We are house one and house number two don't speak the same language. Where yeah. men speak a different language and women speak it all over the Niger Delta. They are diverse. We are a different, unique scenario. Our president is facing very serious problems. I mean, no president has faced the threat of war in the first 90 days. Look at what's happening in Mali, neighboring country, uh, Niger and all of that. Be, despite so our president has issues, and the third thing I know our president is facing is that people are not, people are, a lot of persons in society also have their, their desire and their preferred candidate. That he is not popular enough so that people don't believe him because of his antecedent. So he's also, he's also fighting the battles of self-belief. Or, or what you call, um, when, when, when you say something and people just say, oh, you know, 
People don't even believe anything about his policies and he has technocrats. There's too much sentiment on his balance sheet that he's starting with. I agree with all of that and I empathize and I know what that does to leadership. But I am also in my heart because I approach issues intellectually. I know, for example, in my opinion, he won the election because he has the biggest infrastructure party, had the bigger infrastructure all over the country. The other guys have presence on LGAs. How can you win? So the other thing is that he has some other things working for him. Even if the bad ball has been passed to him, he, well, let's assume it was bad ball that was passed to him. I don't believe he's a bad boy yet, but let's assume that was what it was. He can see by his dexterity and movement and motion. You see, systems constrict around the leadership, L-E-A-D. The lead is the maximum productivity point. How he plays the game himself is 80% deciding factor. I believe that very strongly, and I think I have my reasons for believing so because I think I understand his competencies. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu can make Nigeria work. However, some sacrifices will be needed. Mm. You will need to pull some triggers. You will need to dare some people in the face. After pulling that trigger, you should not be afraid because that's what I think affected President Obasanjo. Because he's already an old man. There we are. There we are. There we are. We'll have to thank you. Yeah, but I just want to just quickly say, I, do, I, I think it's okay to quote the Bible at any point in time. Well, uh, no apologies. No apologies. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you in our program. There we are, Bordnery uh, Management uh, Coach and Consultant has joined us virtually. And um, your last word. On the team Tinubu. Yes, I want to ask uh, President Tinubu to run not as fast as he's running. He should slow down a little bit. Mm. You see, because he said he was going to hit the ground running, he's running too fast and he's making <laughs> some mistakes. He's not taking through his policies. Mm. You, you, because he wanted to impress us, mm. you throw this, you throw that, you do this, you remove subsidies, gone, when you have not actually thought of what to put in place. Your team has not actually decided what to put in place. You floated in error without considering the negative impacts of it. Now you, you rush to the National Assembly to get a franchise to go to war without looking at it. So he should, please, we know that he wants to hit the ground running. We appreciate the student's loan. You roll it out before you start think, talking to ASU, talking to the students, talking to everybody, and now you are saying that, okay, we will remove all this, we will do this, we will do that. So think through your policies. Make haste slowly. And uh, it's better for you to be sure and be slow than to be fast and keep uh, making mistakes. Thank you so much, Bola Bola Wale, um, Public Affairs Commentator. It's been a pleasure having you in our program. Thank you, my thank brother. You so much. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Well, that's our bit today. Dominion Tuesday on um, uh, Morning Flight on Lower XP, where we do entertain you on borders. We'll be back again tomorrow, bigger, fresher, better, and stronger. My name is Shegun Adebo Ali. And I'm Paul Ambassador. Ambassador, have a blessed day. You are so good to me, I wanna praise you I just wanna praise you, praise you, I wanna praise you You deserve all the praise My heart is full of thanks, my heart is full of praise I thank you You are so good to me, I wanna praise you